I hope they don't. They're not gonna show it. Okay. Oh, they are gonna show it. They are gonna show it. Oh my God, man. I feel bad for this girl. I can't watch this like this. Oh my God. Okay, guys. I hope you are ready to cry. I hope you got your tissues, your Kleenex, your wet wipes. Whatever you use to dry your eyes because today's video is probably going to be the saddest. Now, if you're new here, my name is True Too Nice. I want to welcome you guys back to the Town of Light. Now, if you're not caught up to speed by now, I did part one and part two, and I'm going to put those in the description down below. I highly suggest that you go check those out so you can understand what's going to happen in today's episode. But to give you guys a brief overview, in part one we meet this girl named Renee. Renee is dragged to a mental institution known as Charcot to seek treatment for a condition she refers to as delight. And during her time there, she's mistreated by the staff and is raped and physically abused by one of the male nurses. In the previous video, we find out that her mother actually wrote her a few times. Renee only received one of those letters. She writes back, but the letter was never delivered to her mother. We also just found out that Amara died. However, the hospital was trying to cover up her existence to begin with. Why? We don't know. So in today's video, we're going to find out the conclusion. We're going to find out what happened to Renee. Grab your tissues. It wet wipes, like I said before. And, uh, let's go. Okay, so, where we left off before, we found out that Amara had just died. And I guess we're walking through the garden to try to find her grave. We didn't even know that she died till we read the, uh, the documents. I can't be sure it's Amara's. None of these headstones have any names on them, so how are we supposed to figure this out? These crosses are nameless. How will we ever know who is buried here? Exactly. There are no names here. Amara no longer exists. Maybe she never really existed. And I was already dead. Why go on living? Let's put an end mm. to it. I want to leave a letter. I want to apologize for the suffering I have caused. Amara did exist. We found uh, documentation that she was there. She frequented. We found property that she had. Um, proving that she existed. So it's not all in your head. Maybe some of it's in your head. I don't I know. I always wanted to stop doing the things I used to do. But I just did it again and again. I kept on making mistakes. Destroying my life and that of the people close to me. Okay, so we're going to go back in the hospital. Letters? We got letters? I can't. What happened? Oh my god! Why? Uh... Okay, where are they taking me? Okay, those are clearly other patients making those noises. Can I look down? Okay, there you go. I can look down. This looks creepy. Just imagine waking up and two nurses that look like this just dragging you. And you hear all this laughing and pounding on the doors and all that. And you're disoriented because you're losing consciousness. 
All right, we're in the elevator. I can tell. I can tell it's the elevator. I can't see anything other than the ceiling. Can I look up? I'm looking up. I gotta roll the mouse like 50 times. Okay. There goes the light. Jump scare, jump scare. Okay. Back to reality. Okay, so there's a note on the bed. Let's go see what May this is all 4th, about. 1942. The patient had previously expressed suicidal feelings, but never acted on them. Yesterday, she injured herself badly, stabbing herself in the stomach with sharp, pointed scissors. Sedated, restrained, and transferred to an isolation cell. May 10th. Transferred to the agitated ward for observation. Isolation insulin shock therapy. September 25th. Mm positive response to treatment. She replies to questions and remembers what happened, but doesn't want to give explanations. She claims to have memory lapses. Entire days about which she remembers nothing, she appears to be anxious and seeks reassurance. She fears she has yeah, done the drug monstrous you things in the blank periods for which she has no memory. Got you. Got you. Okay. Well, the door's open now. So she's tapping, she's in and out of remembering things. So it begs me to question. Does she have multi-personality disorder or something? And when she blacks out, that's her other side taking over? I mean, this could be in response to all the drugs that they're injecting her with. It could be adding, doing more harm than good. Dang, man, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what is going on. It'd be better if they had cutscenes. I do like the art, though. The cutscene art, but I don't really know what's going on, though. I just see images of stuff. Yeah, we can go in here. Open up! Okay. There's a projector. If it works, it'll be, it'll be a miracle. I don't see any outlets or anything like that, any plugs. Renee T. Uh, Nobody laughs in here. I mean, really laughs. Not those crazy fools who laugh because people say they're mad. I don't know why they laugh out loud. They say I'm mad too, but I never feel like laughing. People used to laugh at me, but they were right, you know? You can't always cry and people laugh when they're afraid, don't they? It happened to you, not to me. It's better that way. They do that to show they're lucky. You mustn't take offense because it's true. And deep down, it's just like pity. If you see what I mean. Mm. But then you think about your own situation. And you laugh. Uh, because you feel lucky that everything is going to get better. That it's all shit. It's all shit, this place. You're not trying to tell me it's not true, are you? An intelligent person, educated, not like me. And if I can see it's a load of shit, just imagine how much better you understand it. No, come on. No, 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 no. I feel fine here, you know? After all, I can do and say anything I want. Was this a recording of her meeting with the nurse or something like that? Because it does sound like she just she just switched up. First it sounds like crap. Now it doesn't sound like crap. She enjoys it because she can say whatever she wants. There's another projector right here. I don't know what to make of what I just heard. But I never heard her speak like that before. Volterra. What's this? 
What? These nurses look demo. That's Renee. She looks like her eyes just look. She's not there anymore. She just gonna sit there? Okay, she's just gonna sit there, right? That's it? I'm still trying to figure out who Renee is, honestly. Okay, so we have a desk right here. It's gotta be some type of paper or something on it. It's a letter. August Telegram. 8, 1942. We hereby notify you of the death of Ada T. Mother of oh. Renee T. A patient in your institution. No known relative. Sincerely yours. Onofrio P. I knew it. I was hoping I was wrong, but I knew I it. No one left. Her Anyone. mother died. Nobody at all. Solitude is very strange. It muffles everything. Slows it down. It's an endless scream that makes no sound. A silent scream. I can't stop looking at myself. I will never leave this place. There is nobody up there for me. These walls have become my mm. skin. And the wretched desperation within them is my soul without a voice. Here, nobody weeps anymore. I would love to feel life, desperation, anger. I've stopped dreaming, daydreaming, maybe even thinking. I've lived in a reality which has corroded me and has stripped me of everything. Wow. Even my ability to feel pain. Bro, her mother was on her way to get her. And she was in high hopes, like, yes, my mother's, f my, f my, my mom is coming to pick me up. I'm getting out of here finally, and then this happens. Ada, uh, Amara died, which was her friend. She probably can go, Mr. Onofrio. I'm pretty sure Ada wanted him to, I'm pretty sure Ada told him to watch over Renee um, in her absence. So why, she could probably go to him. Am I supposed to go down here? Yeah. But she does have nobody except for Mr. Onofrio, I think. What's about to happen? What is all this down here? Do I go outside? I go outside? That's not the wheelchair. Whoa, whoa, whoa. just snap me back around. Hold on. May 5th, 1943. Renee's state of health is good. She is eating and speaking. Her spatial and temporal orientation is good. Therapy suspended. She's doing better. December 3rd. Cool. She calmly asks if she can leave the hospital. Evaluate patient for six months. May 2nd, 1944. Discharge denied despite a favorable psychiatric opinion. The patient has no home or means of support. What? Wait, wait, wait. She was doing better. Even after learning that her mother died. She improved. They stopped treatment for a while because she was doing so good. She asked to go home and they will not let her go home. Because she has nowhere to... Oh my god, yo. How can you... You can't go home because you don't have a home to go to. So you rather... they, they you, you have to stay here? What? Bro. This door's open. What is this? Who's this? The reasons why That's her mother. Are explained. And this is how Renee learns of her mother's death 2 years after the fact. They told Wait, 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 wait. 
they didn't tell her that Renee's mom passed until two years after the fact, bro? May 5th. She tried to kill herself in the night by hanging herself with a sheet, saved by the nurses. Bro, she has nothing, man. She has no one to go to. Restrained to her bed. You didn't tell her she mom that. Oh my God. Tried to kill herself by suffocation. The decision has been taken to perform a transorbital lobotomy. What? Okay, bro, bro. I was right in the beginning. This hospital is insane, bro. She didn't learn that her mother died. First, they stopped giving her her mother's letters. And she wrote her mother back. And they still did not deliver that letter. She doesn't find out that her mother passed until two years after. She was improving, getting better and everything. But they denied her request to leave because they had to tell her then her mother died and she had no place to go. So they she's stuck there now. Bro... Yes, that will cause a lot of people to be suicidal. That is understandable. And that's it's sad. Like. And now she's getting a lobotomy, bro. Whoa, a lobotomy. What's this? Oh, bro. The use of lobotomy spread rapidly in Italy compared to other European countries and America. The original technique pioneered by Moniz was perfected in 1937 by Fiamberti, who conceived the first form of transformative lobotomy, later improved by Dr. W.J. something. The operation involved gaining access to the frontal lobes of the brain by sawing through the orbital bone above the eyelids, then damaging the lobes by means of an alcohol or something else injection or using a special instrument. Contrary to what was often thought, the patients did not always receive invalidating damage, although this was often the case. Moniz was awarded the Nobel Prize for the medicine in 1949. This therapy gradually fell into disuse after the discovery of chlorpro chlorprazine, something like that, in 1951. So this is the procedure for the lobotomy? Oh my god, bro. They're about to do it right now. How much you want to bet? How much you want to bet they're about to perform the lobotomy right now? This is an insanely risky and dangerous procedure. There's nothing wrong with this chick now. Like, she was fine. Look at the nurse. The nurse looks in, look how sad she looks. Yo, this hospital needed to be burned down to the ground, man. She was doing better. Until you guys... Oh, my God. This doctor doesn't look like he cares at all. But the nurse, she looks very sad. You're giving her a lobotomy? Why? Because she was suicidal? Because you guys told her her mother died two years after the fact and that she cannot get out and you basically gave her a life sentence there? I hope they don't. They're not going to show it. Okay. Oh, they are going to show it. They are going to show it. Turn your eyes. Turn your eyes, kids. They're going to inject a needle through her eyes, through her eyelids, to her brain. I don't know if she's, like, sleeping. She looks like she's sleeping. But she looks like she's awake, too. Oh my god, man. I feel bad for this girl. Hey, <laughs> okay. I can't watch this like this. Oh, man. Bro, okay. Oh my god, she's crying. Okay, okay. <sighs> wow.
10th of June, 1944. Who's this? Operation successful. Patient tranquil and collaborative. It worked? Motor coordination capacity reduced, but she's improving. Transfer to the tranquil department in the care of Dr. B. 25th of October. Continues to talk about Amara and her doll, Charlotte. The disturbances of motor capacity show slight signs of improvement. Difficulty walking, not capable of riding, and the nurses report that they have to help her dress, wash, and feed herself. In the summer of 1944, Renee was transferred back into my department. Aware of little, indifferent, hardly ever spoke. One day, she said, when I find the courage to look at myself in the mirror, I see a young face which is aged and looks at me full of fear. She is a woman now who has changed profoundly compared to the girl that I had under my care several years ago. Only the sadness of her gaze and her intelligence are unchanged. She's so young, just 23 years old, but is lacking all vitality. Perhaps her condition may improve, but probably not. Her life has been thrown away. And nobody did a thing to try to avoid this. That's it. Yep, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the saddest game I've ever played. Here's what, here's my big dilemma now, too. Because we see in part one, she walks into the hospital to trigger memories. And when she's speaking, it's very, it's, it's very cognitive. It's very present. You can't tell that she had a lobotomy or that she's like brain dead like the doctor described. It leads me to think either she's fine. Because if you look in the previous video, she has her nails painted and everything. So maybe she improved left the hospital somehow and has become a normal citizen but is just there to reminisce and get closure i think maybe she's there to get closure on what she didn't understand was going on to her while she was in the actual hospital that's one possible outcome of this the other one is she could possibly be a ghost let me know in the comments below what you guys think i kind of wish i didn't even play this because this is going to ruin the rest of my day just thinking about this I'm getting out of here. Take care of your family. Take care of your friends. Take care of everything around you and each other. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.